Um, well, Pranhaun Dar, um, thank you very much for coming to our presentation and discussion, uh, where we'll be sharing some work that we did um, that was planned before the lockdown last year and has taken a slightly different direction due to our experiences of the lockdown. Um, so we're going to be taking you through this uh, short presentation and then hopefully we'll have some time for discussion at the end. Now, unfortunately, <clears throat> due to the change of date and staff um, sickness, uh, it's only me today. Um, so um, I'm, the, I'm Claire and I'm head up the um, Centre of the Enhancement of Learning and Teaching at the University of South Wales. And then my co-authors are Elizabeth, who is our Senior Learning Technologist, and Lindsay, who heads up our UKPSF scheme. So I'll be presenting on their sections on their behalf, but they've been fully part of this presentation. So our plan, um, as you'll have seen from the um, abstract, is that we'll first share our story and the work that we've been doing, and then use this to hopefully trigger a discussion uh, to hear and share your ideas, the resonances and um, ob observations of, for, with you um, from the past year. So a little bit of background first. Um, so I've been in post for about four and a half years now, and our Centre of the Enhancement of Learning and Teaching, or CELT, um, is made up of 10.6 FTEs, and we do everything from TEL, the PG Cert, the UKPSF scheme, general ed dev, admin comms, events, you name it, we do it all. And over those four years, I've been aware, in common with many HEIs, I think, that it could be hard for Celts to make their work visible across the university hierarchies and to share a language that people can recognise to access and also for us to connect to university strategies and policies to show our value and bid for resources. So to help with this making visible work in uh, 2018, 2019, we mapped all our doingses and themed them and created um, an infographic like this, uh, which was our um, tramline infographic. And we identified um, themes of our work in our tramlines, which we identified as uh, professional development, team and individual community building and sharing, uh, recognition, pedagogic research and strategic infrastructure projects. And the document on the website uses pie charts to show uh, the sort of offerings that we had uh, behind each of those um, tram lines. So each month, our team has uh, a CPD afternoon and anyone can raise and run a topic. But in January 2020, we decided to have a focused theme. We thought then over six months would be enough, where we thought about how we would evaluate our reach, value and impact across the tram lines. And we engaged an, a very well-known HE external consultant to help us with this. And then, of course, March 2020 came and we all went online and our work was consumed by staff development as we helped USW write and then run out its response for plans for 2020 September. However, we thought it was critical to keep the us space. And so we carried on our plan CPD after our trigger inputs in June and July with our external colleague, which was focused on professional identities, noticing and valuing everyone's special role in our team. We narrowed the focus of our evaluation to explore the question, how has CELT helped USW during the COVID pandemic? As a first task, groups mapped their works across the tram lines. And that's the making visible activity on the, on the slide. In these rich discussions, we made a surprising observation. Yes, we were doing an enormous amount of professional development, infrastructure and projects, but so too, and with immediately visible evidence of impact and reach, was what we were calling our community building work. So since then, our CPD sessions have focused in on this, firstly testing out our doings is, and then some of the skills we were surfacing, such as brokerage, which was where we were when we wrote and submitted the workshop abstract. And since then, now this year, we've been stepping back and critiquing the literature to explore if community building is really where we, what we mean. And we're in the thick of the woods and trees of that at the moment. So 
Today, we're going to share our journeys in noticing from three different health perspectives, and then we'll share where we are now and invite your responses and discussion as we tussle with the tricky question, what are we really doing? And how could we support and harness it more as we move into our bright future? So the first story is about the UKPSF scheme, and I share this on behalf of Lindsay. So Lindsay has been our UKPSF accredited scheme lead for 10 years. And in that time, she's taken the scheme from strength to strength, adopting different seminar workshops and writing retreat formats. In February 2020, with her crystal ball right on point, she reached out to our international partners and ran our first ever online six week writing series. And then as lockdown appeared, she rolled this um, into a one week option. So she now runs both. So what does this teach us about community building? Well, what struck Lindsay from these observations um, and experiences was the step change in camaraderie and the facilitating wide and broad conversations, pan-university conversations across all sorts of roles that we just simply hadn't before. And she thought harnessed and enabled by being able to see visiting animals, family members and rowing neighbours. We had a spectacular case of rowing neighbours. So through the teams one to one, she used to use to support the asynchronous writing. She got to know people really well and learned that some had been in contact around her for support and discussion, both to do with the submission, but mainly building connections for people in the same and other faculties that had nothing to do with the UK PSF. So some really unexpected connections were being made with the UK PSF trigger at their heart. So that our second story I share on behalf of Elizabeth, our learning technologist. So the TAL team, it's important to know, works in a hub and spoke model. And with all the hubs, um, have a te learning technologists working with each of our faculties. Um, and there, is, there are significant gatekeepers in there, but they spend part of their role working in these, in, with these gatekeepers. And they've worked really hard over the last four or five years um, to build relationships and are now sort of known as the go-to people. So when COVID hit, this established relationship meant that staff knew exactly where to go and the TEL team being approachable and friendly are always prepared and able to hear what people are really asking rather than the words that they are that they're saying. So reflecting on the pandemic experience, being the people um, who were there in the staff crisis, which was intense, but they felt was, was wonderful. Um, the team found a similar to Lindsay, that they were talking to staff more than ever before, and that the home element personalised it, because again, they had noisy washing machines, children and pets, and lots of fun backgrounds, which helped reduce staff stress and um, tension. So Elizabeth felt that the CPD sessions we've been doing have, has helped the TEL team to notice that their role differs from many of the rest of CELT because they've had to enter an established strong community. The team was particularly interested in the brokerage literature and had used it to explore their, how their way of working works and what their expertises are. Specifically, they've noticed how they each work hard to understand the academic staff, their methods and what's important to them and use this knowledge to frame help in a language that is of the person they're trying to help. So the third and final story is, um, is mine. Um, and this is around an initiative I started two years ago at USW called the Communities of Expertise. So we recognise that a lot of the work we do as a team is focused on new staff and that given my role, I could see people with similar interests, but who, because of the size of USW, didn't know each other. And so I piloted the idea of a community of expertise to bring together these like minded people with shared interests in an area particularly important to our strategic vision, which happened to be simulation. And they've been using this for their own CPD and support. So pre-lockdown, these groups met um, in person, typically termly, because it was so hard to get people together. And they grew and achieved a lot, but it required a lot of weaving from me and the other CALP facilitator. Then in June 2020, when we had, we'd gone from four to six, 
uh, communities of expertise in the matters of weeks, there was a common request from the groups, could they meet monthly? And there were a wealth of stories emerging about how these connections offered sanctuary and academic stimulus and connections beyond the frenzy that was the preparations for September. A year on and the leaders have emerged from the group, so I don't have to do that anymore. And they're nearly running themselves with a range of wonderful ideas and outputs, including conferences, research centres, and they're sharing teaching and sharing students to do that teaching. They've also, interestingly, been teaching each other about things like Padlet and on-screen whiteboards and all sorts of things far beyond what we could have hoped for. So having shared these stories, we'll now draw out some of the threads we think connects them before sharing what we think is a model of our work. And then we'd be interested in what you think about your own. So what have we been noticing and what, a, what pandemic um, enabled our aha moments? So the firstly, we recognised um, the centrality of relationships, the direct contact and relationships with gatekeepers, our work and the skills we have in working in this space. And these have come alive for every single person in Calc, irrespective of their role. We've also seen others value this previously implicit expertise, draw on it, but also give back so that all of us benefit as the connections grow and well-being is supported. And finally, I'd like to draw your attention to the penultimate point, because this work has really anchored for us that while we have shared a shared value base, we also all, irrespective of our name roles, have expertise in connecting with people and between people to build trustful yet re robust relationships. So in sum, we've made visible some of the previously taken for granted hows by which we do our work and recognise that while we are doing things, we all do things differently, partly because of our context, we have this shared core expertise around people and idea connecting. So what are we thinking now in terms of our tram line analogy? Well, you'll remember that we started off with this tram line. Um, and we were using our tram lines and conceiving ourselves as little teams within a wider team. And we all work very well together, but perhaps saw ourselves as the image on the right, as different species working in the same pond, but with limited interactions, which is why we're trying to represent this with the Trivial Pursuit wedges. Clearly de de demarcated, but you need all of them to make the whole work, in this case, the staff development of our colleagues. So we're now on a wide deviation from our original plan and are starting to explore how we work in and across our small teams, importantly how we need and work together, the shared skills we have, and along the way starting to cast light on more challenging areas, for example, what we assume are our shared knowledges, values and skills, but may not be. This is particularly true for the easily adopted term community building, which we now realise is problematic and may not be the team, the word that we mean. So for now, we're looking at a new model. Instead of our wedges, we've been looking at spiders webs. Specifically, we've been appreciating our connections within and across our teams as core to our identity and potential as a team. In this diagram, we're playing with the idea that the ability to talk about, understand and value each other's worldviews and knowledge and skills, we have a lot to share and a lot in common. And thus the colours of the wedges fade and the connections come to the core, to the fore, sorry. In addition, our web here shows multiple sets of cross bridges in the one web, web to recognise how these internal cross bridges create strength. But if we stick with the web analogy and take it further, things became even more interesting in our last TPD when we were moved beyond thinking about one web to think about how Kelt works across the institution. And we came up with spider colonies. Elizabeth's image here shows how different communities are different webs, but each joined by relationships and the work of different people. So, for example, if we see the top webs as our faculties, then you can see a spider from Kelt 
going up and the spider from faculty coming down. We think this illustrates the um, teams in the, in the faculties and the Celt tell partners working to build strong connections, each reaching out to the other web. Having these connections and then strengthening them makes it easier for others to move between and for knowledge to transfer along the connection. The analogy works well for the accreditation scheme and our communities of expertise, which connect people in multiple non cognate groups and teams, for example, academics with staff from the library. Every relationship makes the whole web stronger, and it doesn't matter whether the connection is from one strand um, of our work or another because it all contributes. And then if we move on to the final element where we're now thinking that actually each connection is not a single line, but it's a connection between different groups and multiple stra strands of threads within each, um, in each connection. So for example, between Celt and the faculty is a tell strand which Elizabeth weaves with her work. But the same head of learning and teaching in that faculty then might work with Lindsay to develop a UKPSF scheme for staff. And then I and other members of the EdDev team might work to set up a, an EdDev faculty programme to support that. And so it goes on. And so the thread grows stronger and stronger the more strands that are involved, making it easier for more people to navigate, to feel safe to navigate between the communities and then perhaps to start new strands of their own connecting more communities and individuals far further than our original web could have ever thought. So in sum, our team CPD session set out to generate evidence to show people our contribution, our value and our worth. We may get there, but the process enabled by the pandemic has shone light on the unexpected and we're enjoying the deviation and authentic sharing and CPD it brings. So we'd now like to move to the discussion phase and focus on three areas, if we might. First week, Lee, we'd like to ask what thoughts have been bubbling up for you as you've been listening to our stories and our journey? Then we'll invite you to share what might be your team's possibly unnoticed expertise or expertises. And finally, if others in the room are endeavors or part of teams, how can we share this and the wider community to harness these expertises and help promote our value to the broader sector.